It's not what you see, but often what you don't see that makes the biggest impact. Hi, and welcome to The Law Simplified, the world's largest independent online law school platform. I'm your instructor, Shaveen Bandad Nayaka. One of the fundamental traits that must be mastered by law students, irrespective of the jurisdiction that they're studying in, is the ability to construct arguments. Now, more often than not, as I've told my fast track and masterclass students over the past nine years, it's much more about what the examiner chooses to leave out than what he actually mentions. What you see is never what you get. Things that are there in a question are there for a reason, and more importantly, things that are not there in a question are not there for a reason. But rather than talking about how exactly you can manifest your arguments by considering that which is absent in a scenario, I thought it's best to actually have a look at this through a practical example in tort law. So let's have a look. Let's discuss what I mean by considering what an examiner has not mentioned in a scenario as opposed to that which is mentioned by looking at a question in the tort of negligence. Take a moment to read this particular fact pattern scenario. Um, it focuses on duty of care and breach predominantly, but there's a bit of causation and remoteness as well. Since you've had a look at the question at hand, you'll notice that there are a few important aspects that uh, we need to consider. First and foremost, um, there are a number of parties that may potentially be considered as defendants. Um, as a primary defendant, you have Prakash, the educational psychologist. Uh, you also have the council, the Sutton Council, uh, the school, the Sutton Academy. Um, and you have a number of claimants that may also advance um, certain claims. So you have um, the pupils, uh, Miss Stewart as the teacher, as well as more remotely, uh, you might also have um, Ricky, who is the center of attention. He has a nine-year-old pupil who has caused the ruckus, so to speak. But what's important to us, and I'm going to highlight this for easy reference, um, is in relation to the genesis of the problem. So you'll notice had you read this question or the fact pattern that Prakash has reported uh, once having considered uh, or looked at Ricky um, that he would benefit from specialist support but he decides not to categorize him in category one but he puts um, Ricky into category two. Um, subsequently the fact pattern indicates that because of financial constraints the council um, has opted not to provide specialist support um, to category two and limited it only to pupils that have been rated category one. Now, immediately when you look at this, um, for the astute uh, among you, you might be sort of the cogs in your mind would work towards public policy um, and executive decision making, which essentially means that there would be a defense on the part of the council because it's a matter of resource um, selection as opposed to resource usage. Uh, this would be X and Bedfordshire County Council. Uh, what I mean by that is that uh, the court has very limited power uh, in order to scrutinize decisions of this caliber because it goes beyond justiciability. It goes beyond the powers of the judiciary because it's an executive decision on where the money should be allocated. Uh, but keeping that aside, what I want you to focus on from these two aspects, from these two facts that we've taken on, is whether Prakash knew um, about the lack of specialist support not being allocated to category two. Because if you look at the facts, what they do specify is that Prakash has decided based on the circumstances to categorize Ricky into class two or category two as opposed to one. Only subsequently are we told that the specialist support is only available for category one pupils or students as opposed to category two. Now, on the one hand, had Prakash known this and still gone ahead and categorized the pupil, categorized Ricky in category two, this would amount to uh, a breach. Um, he has acted below the reasonable standard expected because of prior knowledge this constitutes negligence. However, 
had he not known this um in other words had prakash presumed correctly or incorrectly that specialist support is available for both category 1 and category 2 his actions may not be elevated to the level of breach now you'll notice here that whether he knew or not is something that the examiner has willfully omitted from the scenario uh, this is an invitation for a student to actually explore this aspect not by putting things into the question but rather indicating that the student is aware um from the standpoint of an examination that it's a vital piece of information in determining breach right as a fundamental trait that must be mastered by law students irrespective of the jurisdiction that they're studying in the idea that the things which are not there and what has not been mentioned by examiners are at times more important than the facts that have been presented to you is the differentiating fact between a student that gets a second upper or a first class law degree by implementing these techniques the ones that you just saw in this video you're not just going to be able to pass your exam but ace it altogether if you like the type of content that the law simplified as a youtube channel as well as a platform produces do make sure to subscribe to the law simplified channel and make sure you have a look at the comprehensive online law school platform complete with theory tutorial and workshop lessons that have conducted for students all around the world that have gone on to achieve first class law degrees but until the next time that we meet have fun stay safe and as always obey the law